project we're working on is um, uh, genetics by environment, and which involves a central progeny test. Um, Neville Jobson is um, uh, leading this, and Neville, as you may well know, is managing director of Abacus Bio. Neville, Neville joined Abacus in uh, 2001, coming from an, an extensive practical and applied science background in New Zealand and Europe, uh, agricultural science and agribusiness. He's developed a variety of technology innovations in the area of imaging technology, measurement of carcasses, and meat cuts and live animals using CT and ultrasound scanning, as well as genetic evaluation of livestock and aquaculture species. Uh, Neville. <coughs> Right, thanks Graham. Um, excuse my voice, I was um, in bed with uh, a cold and Eleanor said I had to come. Um, my talk was really important and she gave me one minute to talk through um, what we've achieved so far <coughs> in the central progeny test. So hopefully you're all familiar with what the central progeny test is. It's been um, running since uh, its establishment in 2002 on three lowland sites, <coughs> woodlands down at the very bottom, um, Ashley Dean started in 2003, and on-farm research Bukawa came in in 2005. And it's been a, a big program that has delivered a lot of benefits to the industry in terms of adding genetic connections between various breeds and breed groups. And um, as a result, we've seen um, an improvement in the national genetic trends for a whole variety of traits. So it's already added a lot of benefit. Um, it's been a big collaboration between a number of players, um, beef and lamb, uh, sill, uh, Ag Research, Abacus, um, Lincoln, and On Farm Research, and um, has delivered a, a, a range of benefits to the industry. One of the last things um, that Ovita did when it was um, just looking at how much it had left, th these programs take a long time, so we're very fortunate that Ovita had enough money left that we could establish two hill properties. And so they're on the map, somewhere I've got a pointer here. We've got um, Onslow, whoops, Onslow View down the bottom here, just um, in the hill country immediately north of Miller's Flat, and Coromico, which is just east of Fielding. And Onslow View is owned by EGL Pastoral, Grant Luderman, um, his farming business, and Coromico is Taratahi Agricultural Training Colleges. So there are two um, farms, and on the three lowland sites, we've been evaluating um, a range of industry dual purpose and terminal sire rams for 12 to 14 years. Um, we're only doing the maternal ones on um, the, the hill sites. So the, in the Beef and Lamb Genetics program, the, the central progeny test is a very large part of the program. It's going to be reviewed to make sure that we're getting the best value for that spend. But assuming that um, it's, it's not doing too bad a job, then the lowland sites will continue as per normal doing the evaluation of both uh, terminal and du dual purpose um, sires. The, um, if we have a look, the, we've had two, uh, two AI programs done establishing these animals at the hill sites. In 2013, um, we had an AI program. It was using industry use. They were bought in for EGL. They were flock used. They're already on the property up at uh, Coromico. The male progeny have been slaughtered and the Viascan yield measurement has actually happened on those animals and that's been included in the results booklet that we've got this year. So some of that data is already in the system and contributing to that. In addition, um, the ewe progeny were retained and on both places they've been naturally mated as hoggets. Um, and as I understand it, we just had a meeting um, of the management committee last week and hogget lambing is underway at Coromico. Um, the main lambing started at Onslow and the hogget lambing will be delayed behind that. It's just the latest because of its, um, the, the environment that they're under. We've completed a second year of AI... Um, oops, got to stop hitting both buttons. Second year of AI um, on both the properties, once again using industry use. The intention is that the U progeny that we've um, generated will become the replacements in that flock, but they don't come into that until they're tutus. So um, we have yet to get any of those animals being in the system long enough that we've started to get the maternal information, which is the bit that we're really interested in getting. So lambing has been uh, completed of that main ewe at Coromico, and it's about to start at Onslow View. So we're really two years into the program, even though Beef and Lamb Genetics has only been running for one year, but it's all been about um, generating those animals that are going to start yielding us the results that we um, are looking forward to, ref uh, to receiving. Now, 
I should just point out we're, we're referring to them as, as hill sites and lowland sites. However, in reality, we've got five environments in this because if you look at the range of environments, I'll just pop back to, back to here, woodlands is a completely different environment, for example, to Pakawa. So we've got the ability to look at hill versus lowland but also to see how much they vary just between individual farms and flocks. And so the aim of this program is to just find out, do we get re-ranking in the size in a whole range of, of performance traits but, um, in different environments? So as I said, we've already collected the meat yield, yield data and it's gone into the booklet. No G by E analysis has been undertaken on that yet. The reason for that is that that's currently what happens inside SIL. We don't do anything that deals with that at the moment in terms of the normal breeding values that go out. We could add something or we could have done some little temporary measure, but, but we need to do the work to actually find out to analyse what's the best way to analyse this. And then, so we don't want to go off and do something, find it's given some ranking, do a proper analysis, find out we've done the wrong thing and then have animals re-ranking. So the information is being used, but we haven't done the gene genotype by environment interaction. Hoggett lambing results are coming out. Um, however, that's not going to help us from a genotype by environment and direction point of view. We don't do hoggett mating on the lowland sites. That decision was made very early on and that's been part of the protocol. We do measure data first estrus, but they're not actually mated. So that uh, at a two-tooth mating, um, those animals that got pregnant, have um, no, no, an, no animals have been pregnant before. So we've got one straight mob. So the first real data of interest we're going to get is going to be next year when we get the first two-tooth matings coming through. And that's... That's where we expect from the industry, uh, from the literature that's out there, where we're more likely to find um, genotype by environment directions. So, as I said, it's all about being generating the animals. Um, it takes a long time to get there, and next year we're going to start getting some results. Thank you. Uh, no. you Neville, if you haven't done that GE analysis yet, is there any chance of getting a um, copy of results from the lowland and the hill country separate, just to allow us to make decisions earlier? You know, given this, this next coming mating? The, well, we, we haven't decided, the, the answer is no in the short term, um, and the management committee would have to, you know, basically consider that on its merits. We haven't had a, we haven't had a request for doing that. The issue is that we don't want to go and create, um, just do an analysis on, on the, the hill flocks and the, and, the, and the lowland flocks, give two breeding values, because that may cause confusion. You know, we want to know that we're doing it right. So, <coughs> We, yeah, we've only we've got ten sires, um, and we've got um, twenty progeny per sire that have been uh, fifteen progeny per sire that have been slaughtered. So it's not going to be too informative at this stage. <laughs>